the, uh, the incident. But there's another argument about this kind of expectation formulation. That is, if a company is starting to disclose risk factors about viruses or denial of services starting from year 2002, and they just keep, add, keep disclosing and disclosing all the way to year 2006. So this kind of information is just like a reminder, and we just repeated talking about it. Right? So in this case, there might not be new expectations, because the investors have already known that back to year 2002. So here we try to distinguish the real disclosures with the acknowledgments. That is, whether this is real or new information released to the market, or this is just a reminder. Okay. So for hypothesis three, we want to focus on if information security risk factors stated in the current year's report have been disclosed or have not been disclosed, and what's the mitigation impact. Okay. And the last hypothesis is that as we just discussed, we want to get into the details of these disclosures. So we try to extract several key phrases through a content analysis. That is, we read through these risk factors and we try to come up with the key phrases that are the major factors disclosed in these factors. Okay, and we want to see that what are the major factors that can cause this mitigation effect. Okay, as a first step, into the, our clustering analysis of the tax mining part. Okay, questions so far? Okay, so in order to uh, really approach our hypothesis, we take the following steps. First, we need to collect or identify the information security incidents, right? So we search 12 different keywords such as virus, worm, computer breaking, or identity theft. Okay, we search for different 12 different keywords uh, from year 2000, uh, 1996 to 2006. Okay, and we search these keywords on the major media, such as the Wall Street Journal, the Washington Post, the USA Today, and also on CNET and ZDNet. Okay, by searching these keywords, we are able to identify the news that talking about the breach announcements. Okay, so after identifying these news, we should be able to get a list of the breached companies. Okay. And when we collect this data, we clean the data as the following. Of course, first, we must have a specific date. Okay. That is, for example, some news we read through, we found the following, said that last year a company was attacked by virus twice. Okay. So in that case, we don't know exactly what happens in that case. So we're unable to uh, identify the stock price reaction to that uh, incident. Okay, so the effect must be clear and stated in a very clear way. Okay, and the second one, so the second one is that we need to tease out all the confounding effects. That is, if there's an earnings announcement, a merge acquisition, or stock split, we know that there should be some kind of stock price reaction to those information, right? So in that case, we are not able to capture the stock price reaction specifically to our information security incidents. So in that case, we tease out all the confounding effects. Okay, and the third question is that we're not sure whether this effect is a prevailing effect or specifically limited to the bridge company. So we get a list of the control group. That is, this control group, we do not encounter any uh, bridge announcement from the media. Okay, so as a control group, we are able to find out that whether this mitigation effect is specifically to the bridge company. So how can we get this uh, list of control group? We search on Yahoo Finance, and we search on Hoover's database to get a list of competitors. Okay, and based on these competitors, we are able to match it to the bridge companies. If we have uh, several alternatives, we just pick the one with the similar market capitalization. Okay, so here we have our samples, and the next step is that we need to collect the disclosures in financial reports. And this is how it looks like. Okay, and this is uh, the disclosure of uh, financial reports in Amazon's annual report for year 2000. Okay, as you can see that this is from the control report. And there are three parts in the control report. One is how the company managed their internal control and procedures. And the second one is that do they, how do they evaluate their internal control and procedures? 
And the third one is that whether there's any change in their control and procedures. And this one is the evaluation part. And we see that uh, the companies has evaluated the effectiveness of the company's disclosures, controls, and procedures. Okay. And they found out that the company's disclosure, control, and procedures are effective in recording, processing, summarizing, and reporting on a timely basis information required to be disclosed under the Exchange Act. Okay, so we see that there's no major flaw in their internal control and procedures. So we can argue that maybe it's effective and there's no major weakness in their information infrastructure. Okay, another example is about the risk factors disclosed in their financial reports. And this one is also disclosed in Amazon's reports. And it says that, for example, they experience system interruptions and their computer and communication systems and operations could be damaged or interrupted by breaking computer viruses, physical or electronic breakings, and similar disruptions. And all these disruptions could cause system interruptions, delays, or losses of critical data and could prevent them uh, from providing services and accepting fulfilling orders. Okay, and it could also damage their reputations. Okay, so based on this example, you know that if the companies disclose this kind of risk factors, the investors know that, okay, Amazon's uh, system might encounter some kind of interruption, right? And this kind of interruption might be caused by, say, computer viruses, physical or electronic break-ins, and similar disruptions. And, can, and this kind of disruption can cause what, and what kind of effect is that the impact should be maybe they cannot provide their services, they cannot fulfill their orders, or they, cannot, they might suffer some uh, reputation damage. Okay? So this kind of disclosure content can help investors understand what's going on with these risk factors. Okay, and here is our the descriptive statistics of our disclosures. So the average number, as you can see, for the experimental group or the bridge companies that increases after year 2002 just because the Sabinus Oxley Act. Okay, because it's mandated to have this kind of disclosures. And the average number of risk factor disclosed also increases on average. So how can we measure the stock price reactions to these information security factors? We, take, we use the market model to evaluate, okay, or the event study approach. So the, the idea of the market model is as follows. The RIT here is the stock return for company I at time T. So what is the return? The return is just the price changing from time T to time T plus one, right? So it's just a price change and the market return, the RMT here, is also a price change, but it's aggregately from the index level, okay? So RMT here stands for the average stock price change in M, uh, American Stock Exchange, in NASDAQ, and I see the New York Stock Exchange, okay? So the idea of this market model is as follows. We try to get the average or the normal relationship between a company's stock price change with the market. Okay, so for example, when the, market, uh, when the market index increases 10 points, we should expect there's a 1% change in our stock price return. Okay, so that's on average. So if we can get this on average thing, when there's an event comes out, and we know that the company's stock price might, volatile, uh, might change or in response to that event. So we can measure that what's the difference between that stock price change with the normal situation. Okay, and that is called the abnormal return. The abnormal return is try to capture the stock price reaction that cannot be captured by the market reaction. Okay, so if we can get that part, that means that event, that event for example, the, stock, uh, the information security incident <coughs> has some kind of in, uh, impact on the stock prices. Okay, and then we need to accumulate it across the window or the period we want to study. And here, the information breach announced date by the media is called the day zero. Okay, and generally for event study, we want to capture the reaction of stock prices from day minus one to day zero or day plus one. Okay, we want to go back one day before is that there might be some information leakage. <coughs> that is 
the press might know this information one day before they actually announce.